Today's video is how to set up your NX transmitter with RealFlight 9.5. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is set up a template in our radio. I've went ahead and done this and named it RF 9.5. You will do this in the system settings. You can see there model type, you pick the airplane, model name, and then aircraft type. Aircraft type, you want to go ahead and set that as one aileron, one flap. Now, you might be thinking, well, BD, what if I fly an airplane that doesn't have flaps? Well, nothing changes there. The only difference is going to be you're going to set up a flap menu system and you assign your switch, which is normally D. And when you do that, when you fly an airplane that has flaps, it works like normal. And if you're on an airplane that doesn't have flaps, it doesn't change anything. The plane flies like normal. And if you toggle the D switch, it's not going to do anything. Then you want to go to channel assign. A is set up to fall on gear. Channel 7, which is auxiliary 2. I've got it on C. That's going to be your flight mode switch for your beginner, intermediate, and experienced mode planes. You also can assign, if you have an NX8 or NX10, you will have the option of assigning channel 8, auxiliary 3, to the R knob. If you have an NX10, you also can assign switch E to channel 8 auxiliary 3 as well. The last thing you need to do on this screen is go down to the bottom, click on USB settings, and you'll notice that the mode says inhibit. When you connect to the computer, you have to have your transmitter in controller mode. You also want to plug this in first, power it up, set it on the model and then open up the software. If you try to open up real flight without the transmitter connected through controller mode, it'll say that a controller has not been recognized. Please retry before the software starts. So you'll get an error message. Go here to mode, just change that to game controller. After you set these things up, when you go to the normal menu, you will notice that our light's not on. That means it's no longer transmitting RF signal, which also means that it's in controller mode. So that's the way that you know you've got it set up. Now let's take a look at our normal settings that we can customize. You can go in and set up dual rate and expo, put your control services on different switches, just like you would do your real airplane. Something you want to keep in mind though, is before you set that up, you want to do one of two things. Keep these in mind. One is you want to allow your high setting or the position that your switch is on to be 100% before you calibrate. If you go on the dual rate and expo screen, and for example, you can see it's on 60%. That means if I calibrated this with the computer and the real flight software right now, the max throw is going to be 60%. If 60 is the max you would ever use, that ain't no big deal. However, you want to be able to adjust like you normally would on your real airplane. So calibrate before you set up the dual ray and expo screen or have all your switches to 100%. Set up your throttle cut like normal. If you're flying an electric plane, it won't let the motor spin up. If you're flying a gas or nitro airplane, it won't actually kill the motor. It will just keep you from being able to throttle up and raising the RPMs on the motor. Flat system works like normal. You can go in there and change the percentages from different airplanes, whether you want more or less flaps, more or less elevator mix, just like the dual rate and expo screen. Those are not, you have to set them and leave them. You can adjust them for different airplanes. If you have mixes, go ahead and put the mixes that you want to try out in there. Something that you could do is the Odd Auxiliary 2, which is the Panic Assist. So if you want to use the Panic Assist, one thing that you want to keep in mind is you may need to make an adjustment depending on the airplane. If it's a plane that has a retractable gear, you want to set it up Odd Auxiliary 2. If it's a plane that doesn't have a retractable gear, you want to set this up I to gear. I have a video that I made previously on my channel to show you how to configure panic assist mode. So if you don't know how to do that, check out that video and it'll give you a complete walkthrough of how to set this up, the percentages and on a particular button or switch. 
You can also set up your timer and audio vents as well. So now that we've got our radio configured, we need to plug it in through the provided USB cable and go ahead and get everything calibrated on the real flight simulator. Once we've done that, you'll be ready to fly. Now I've skipped ahead and got everything set up so we can go into the calibration. However, there's three things you wanna remember when you're connecting the transmitter to the computer. One is when you connect USB from the transmitter to the computer, you'll hear a small tone verifying that the computer recognizes the transmitter as a USB controller. And down on the bottom right hand corner, it'll scroll a little bit and then it'll say that the USB device can now be used. Number two, you wanna have that configured before you start up real flight software, because if not, you get an error message saying it can't recognize a controller. Make sure that you have it plugged in and then you click retry once you've plugged it in. Number three, if you're using dual rate and expos, you need to have all your percentages on 100%, so you need to make sure the switches are in the correct position. To get started, we go here to the top left-hand corner, where it says simulation. Go to select controller. Click on Spectrum NX Series Wired USB. That may already be highlighted. If it is, just skip that and go to calibrate. Before we start the calibration, we need to center all controls, including the throttle stick. You'll notice on the user interface transmitter on the screen that my throttle stick's down, so I need to go ahead and push that up. I'll put in the middle and make sure trims are centered. You will notice some of them are bouncing around, some of them are solid, and that's part of this calibration. So what I do is I start with the sticks first, and you'll notice that it matches on the screen. And you want it to be solid when you get done. So sometimes you'll want to cycle it a couple of times. Now we're going to do left and right. Then we'll do our throttle up and down. Do this one left and right. And I like to finish with them in the center. So you notice that my throttle was down a little bit. I moved it up. Then I'll do the back sliders. Even if it's something that's not configured, I'll still go ahead and flip the switches on them just to be sure. And if it's something slow like Z axis right there, which is the flaps, let it go all the way to zero and then flip it back. Same thing, I toggle it a couple of times just to make sure it's calibrated properly. So now we've gone through all the switches on the transmitter. We just click finish and then you click Okay, we've got our different rates. I'll just show it to you on aileron. I'm gonna hold it to the right. I'm on my highest rate. I'm on the middle rate. I'm on the low rate. So you can see we've got our rate set up. Use our flaps. You notice they're working. They also have a slower deployment. They didn't go instantly because I've got that set up in the flap system. We toggle the C channel, which is our flap mode. You'll notice it'll go from AS3X to safe. And then also I'm hitting the panic assist button. So everything's working. One last thing is if you wanna make your screen full screen and get rid of the bars at the top and bottom, you push Alt Enter. The reason why I've got it in what's called window mode currently is because that's how you access the taskbar up at the top. So push Alt Enter, these bars will go away and you'll have a full screen. If you found this video informative or learned something new today, go ahead and push the like button. If you want to see future videos, subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll see you on the next one.